Well, this is a shocking thing and it's bringing mass panic. Mystery drones flying over Colorado in the grid patterns every night from 5 to 10 are uh, still a mystery because they say that they don't even exist. How is that possible? We've had multiple persons reporting that they've seen them, seen them, sighted them with their eyes from 5 in the evening to 10 at night that they fly in grid patterns. They've seen them, that they have a wingspan, wingspan about 6 feet across and uh, they don't have any permits. The FAA has not given them permits to fly at night. The uh, aviation authorities say that they didn't have any planes or anything over those areas. They're flying over people's farms. Some of them have even uh, come right up to people's living room picture windows, staring through their windows at the people inside the house. Now, all this has been going on for like a month, over a month now. And it's not only in Colorado, they're even in the states around Colorado, Nebraska. And uh, it's going on every night. Nobody has caught one to uh, ascertain who owns it and uh, what it's doing and why it's doing this. They have to have a special permit to fly at night and uh, permits have not been given. So what is this story now? This is by Aaron Gordon on The Vice concerning the fact that it's not clear that the Colorado mystery drones even exist. Drone hobbyists say media and FAA regularly uses drone panic, panic to enact strict regulations. There are others, conspiracies, uh, crazes, who say that uh, it could be something uh, official but secret, some kind of a, an experiment, and uh, they're not telling us. They don't want people to know, quote-unquote. But uh, there are those here that say that perhaps it's a, it's a way to enact stricter, stricter regulations. It all started December 23rd. That's when the Denver Post reported a, on a band of large drones flying over Phillips and Yuma counties in northeast Colorado. Phillips County Sheriff Thomas Elliott, as relayed by the Denver Post, provided an eerie description of this drone activity. He said the drones stay about 200 feet to 300 feet in the air and fly steadily in squares of about 25 miles. And then there are at least 17 drones. They emerge each night around 7 p.m. and disappear around 10 p.m. Well, others say they emerge around 5 p.m., right at sunset, towards darkness. Nobody interviewed by news reporters, including local authorities, the Federal Aviation Administration, the Drug Enforcement Administration, the U.S. Army, the Department of Defense, or the Air Force said they knew what was going on. So, if you take it on face value, it sounds like a peculiar installment in the annals of drone sightings. But drone enthusiasts are not taking it on face value. Loretta Alcalai, former FAA lawyer, she now works as an aviation attorney and is a drone enthusiast herself. And she told Motherboard, these media reports, quote, seem to harken back to the old days when there was so much media sensationalism and scaremongering with any drone sighting, end quote. So this week's, uh, in the week since, we've learned nothing new. After more sightings and reports, failed attempts to record or even photograph the drones, the Colorado Department of Public Safety flew an airplane over the area in, uh, that's reportedly uh, having these uh, uh, drone swarms every night, in order to detect heat signatures below. After an almost five-hour flight, they found absolutely nothing. The Colorado Spring Gazette thought they had solved it when they found out the Air Force, quote, has a base in Cheyenne that conducts drone operations, end quote. But a few days later, the Air Force said it's not them either. So that strikes them out. To say this has caused quite a kerfuffle, would be an understatement. Everybody's really perplexed at what these things are. In the meantime, there are some weird orb lights uh, you'll see in the FBI 
in the CBS this morning. Thinking they have weird orb lights over these farming areas. Now, after more than 70 local, state, federal, and military officials met in Brush, Colorado, which has a population of less than 5,500 people, a joint drone task force consisted of 10 to 15 separate agencies. It was put together to solve this mystery. It's a big conundrum, and it attracted its fair share of national media attention, social media, everybody's uh, you know, asking what these things are. Anything from uh, secret uh, projects to even extraterrestrial aliens and UFOs. Now, while media attention has not gotten to the bottom of what all these things are, it spurred additional reports of drone sightings further into Nebraska. So it's not only Colorado, it's Nebraska too and from as far away as North Carolina and even California. So it's basically half the, half the country. A seemingly minor detail lacking from these reports is that there is pre precise little evidence these drones actually exist. That's not to say this is some hoax or all the eyewitness accounts are wrong. Let's keep in mind that these things fly at night and it's virtually impossible to pick anything up with your cell phone or camera when they're flying uh, ways off at night. You can see them, but it doesn't mean that the camera is able to pick it up. So, um, the lack though of evidence has not been lost on drone hobbyists and advocates. They have seen this play before. Alkali pointed out there is a long history of media accepting drone sighting claims without much rigor, only for investigators to later determine that whatever was seen was not a drone at all. Her point is backed up by a white paper from DJI. It's a major drone manufacturer which points out 10 such cases with links to both the initial media hysterics and the ensuing fact check from official investigations. And two such cases were these. In August 2015, a pilot reportedly striking a drone about 20 miles from O'Hare International Airport the FAA investigated the incident and found that, in fact, he hit and killed a bird. Eight months later, in a widely publicized story, a British Airways pilot said he hit a drone near Heathrow Airport, but the UK Transport, uh, Transport Secretary later reported it was not a drone and probably just a plastic bag. So DJI asserts in its report that this is part of a larger trend of pilots falsely reporting pretty much any unidentified object in the sky as a drone, and DJI further cites a study by the Academy of Model Aeronautics analyzing all the records of such sightings as of August 21st, 2015, and they found that only 27 out of 764 reports, that's only 3.5%, were legitimate near misses of drones. In the years since, we've only gotten more evidence that drones are the new UFOs. This brings us back to the Colorado, Nebraska sightings recently occurring, picking up steam once a helicopter pilot reported coming into, quote, dangerous proximity, end quote, with a drone, although no further evidence could be proved uh, provided for his claim. Perhaps it sounds familiar. Okay, well, when you're driving, you know, when you're flying a helicopter, it doesn't mean that you have some uh, camera ready to take a picture of the drone in front of you that you're almost slamming into. Now, from our perspective, this illustrates why you should take concerns about drones with a real big grain of salt. This is what DJI spokesman Adam Lisberg told Motherboard about Colorado reports, because who knows what you're really seeing, he said. Without an independent confirmation or measurement, it's a lousy way to try and make a policy on how drones should be identified. In the absence of much hard evidence, some drones enthusiasts have popped over to online forums to express their pet theories, including, but not limited to, top secret government efforts to locate lost nuclear bombs. That's the latest one that we heard about. And of course, always, it's always a forefront, first and last ETs and UFOs. But the most popular theory, the timing is just a little too coincidental with a recently proposed FAA rule that would require drones to be identified remotely using a unique identifier and GPS coordinate sent via cellular signal to the central database, which many enthusiasts worry will ruin their hobby. What a great way to drum up support for such a policy, 
these posters suggest that a nationally covered drone mystery. FAA conspiracy is, like most conspiracy, conspiracy theories, less a genuine assertion of the version of events they think actually occurred, and it's more an expression of a larger frustration with the way the world works. Lisberg, who formed the record, who for the record does not believe the FAA is running a secret campaign to fly drones over rural Colorado or to scare people in order to pass a remote ID rule for the drones, well, he pointed out that the FAA has been working on its rule change for years in consultation with key players in the drone industry. But he, he conceded the specifics of the FAA's remote ID rule are not popular in the drone community. For its part, the DJI advocates for a different type of remote ID technology than the one the FAA is proposing. Motherboard reached out to the FAA about this series but did not hear back from them. So if there is a worthy lesson from this whole thing with these Colorado and Nebraska and drones, night drones in grid patterns, it's unlikely to be a product of finding out who's actually flying these drones. It is said it has to do with our attitude towards the unknown. In this sense, there is some semblance of agreement between the drone enthusiasts and local officials trying their best to navigate this new strange world. The question is, do authorities need to know what it is? Well, of course they need to know what it is. First of all, it's a security issue. I don't want drones flying over my farm and looking through my windows every single night. Excuse me. Of course we need to know what it is. The easiest thing is just to, you know, see no evil, hear no evil, see no, you know, talk no evil, speak no evil. Sean Wedland, a drone enthusiast in uh, Sacramento, California, asked Motherboard over Facebook message, is it causing any harm? Yes, it is causing harm. It's invading my privacy. I don't like to watch the stars at night and see those things over me. It's intimidating and frightening. That's why we have rules that those things can't be up at night unless they have a permit, you know? Yes, it is causing harm. That's my answer. It is causing harm. Has it created danger? Yes, it is It is creating danger. Do Americans need to know what it is? Yes, Americans do need to know what it is. I would argue no. Well, I would argue yes, we do. It is harmful, it is dangerous, and Americans want to know what it is. I would argue no, not that the cost of freedom. Well, wait a minute. Are you saying, don't find out what it is. I want to be free. Let everybody do what they want over our heads and into looking through our windows. I don't agree with you there. I'm sorry. So a surprisingly similar takeaway, at least philosophically speaking, as one of the first government officials involved in the mystery, Yuma County Sheriff Todd Cobbs he said, all I can say is don't live your life in the fear of the unknown. This is what he wrote in his Facebook post. Take life as it comes. Be proactive on issues when you can, and be thankful for the place we live. We call home Yuma County. Oh, oh, that's so beautiful. That looks like something out of uh, preschool class. Are you kidding me? All right, this is on Vice, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. Now, with comments like that from officials, obviously anybody... Uh, from uh, people that uh, specifically don't uh, befriend the United States can come and fly their drones anywhere in the United States. Is that what you want? This is a real security issue. They better get down to this immediately. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on 
your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.